here we go. Managing your ESPP. So first off, what, what are we talking about here? We're talking about our finances, your financial life. You're going to have a financial life no matter whether you are proactive in managing it or not. Your finances are going to happen. And there's two different outcomes when you get to the end of your life. You're either number one, door number one, be going to be able to afford to do everything you want in life, or door number two, miss out on doing things that you want in life. And we certainly don't want to miss out at the end of our life. Um, that's the worst case scenario. So um, whether you get, what, what, which, whichever door you go through, I can't predict that. I can't tell you what's going to happen because there's so many variables, so many things that can happen in the future. But I can tell you that without the process of planning, the probability of going through door number two is much, much greater. Just makes sense. If we're not working at this, thinking about it, making intentional decisions with our finances, it's more likely things are not gonna work out to our benefit. And I look at our financial life in four different areas across the columns here. And I think they're all equal. Protect what you have. That's insurance and estate planning. Know where it goes. That's spending. Yes, spending is as important as anything else in your financial life. Something we all want to avoid looking at, but it's super important. After all, that's what you're trying to optimize for. You, you want to be able to spend money on the things you want. And then third, making it grow. That's the investment. And fourth, retaining independence and dignity. We're not going to live off of our kids in our older age. We attack all of this with intention and purposeful effort. And the idea is for you to build your best financial life, not the best financial life on the block, not the best financial life among your friends, but the best financial life for you in your situation and where you want to go. Now, today we're talking about ESPP. That, of course, sits in the investments world. Now, I want you to look here on the left how far down the list investments are. Investments are just a portion of our financial life. We've got to get all of this working together. And it's, but investments are just a portion. Of course, ESPP is just even a part of that. So uh, let's get into the meat of the, of the talk today. What is an ESPP? That's the first thing we're going to talk about. Why should we have a process to sell? We should definitely have a process to sell rather than just uh, when we need to spend the money. Um, and so we'll talk about that. And then finally, I'm going to provide you a tax smart way to transition your, not just your ESPP, but all of your company stock into the rest of your financial life. That's where we're ultimately headed with this. All right. So what is an ESPP? An ESPP stands for Employee Stock Purchase Plan. This is a plan that your employer has that gives you the right to buy stock without paying any commission using funds deducted from your paycheck. And the way it works is there's an offering period where they deduct money from your paycheck. That money just sits at the company. Uh, it's not invested in stock or anything. Uh, and then the purchase date, we get to the purchase date and that money that was deducted, all of it is used to buy stock in your company. Uh, most company plans offer that at a discount. Otherwise, why would you do it? Because you can always just go out and buy stock. Uh, usually of a rent of 15%, sometimes 10%, but we'll stick with 15% for today because that's the way most plans work. So you're going to buy the stock at a discount of 15%, but wait, it gets better. Not just 15% off of the price on the purchase date, but potentially if, the, if your plan has a look back feature, which most do, it'll be 15% off the lower of the initial date on the offering period and the purchase date. So you could get much greater than a 15% discount. Let me show you how this works in real life, or as an example, I should say, not really real life. Um, so let's say you enroll when the stock price is at 100 bucks, and they start deducting money from your paycheck. Six months goes by, and the stock is purchased. And at that point, the stock is worth $120. Now, you get a 15% discount. You've got the look back feature. What do you pay for the stock? You pay $85 because it's the lower of that initial price and the, the price on the date of purchase. So 100 is less than 120. You get 15% 15 off that. You're paying $85 for something that's worth 120. That's $35 of free money per share. We like free money. This is one of the only places you can get free money. And uh, so we want to do this. We want the free money. Now, that's what the stock price goes up. Let's look at example two. If the price goes down, again, you enroll when the stock is 100 bucks, stock price goes down to 80, 
You buy the stock when the price is at 80. What price do you pay? You get 15% off of $80 now. So you're going to pay $68. You get $12 of free money. So you can see whether the stock goes up or down, you get free money all the time. If you have the cash flow to sustain this, you should be maxing out your ESPP because it's the only place where you get free money. Now, you should sell it once you get the free money, sell the stock and put the money in your pocket or wherever you need to. Um, but you should definitely be maxing it out because it's, it's basically in addition to your paycheck. Now, let's talk about selling and not selling. And, and taxes are always the question that come up here. So this is a little bit complex. And I'm going to go through the complexity part for you. But I'm also going to simplify it at the end. So here's the complex part. Everybody wants capital gains treatment on their stock because that's the lowest tax rate you can get. And the way to get that on ESPP is you have to do two things. You've got to hold the stock for two years past that initial offering date and one year past actual purchase. So if you have a six month enrollment period, then you have to own the stock for a year and a half after you actually bought it. So you buy it after six months after the enrollment period, now you've got to hold on to the stock, write it up or down for a year and a half to get the lower tax treatment. If you, if you don't wait that long, then you're going to pay your regular ordinary income tax. Okay? It's a little bit more complex than that, as you can see on the screen, because a portion of it is an ordinary income, a portion is capital gains, but we can think about it uh, that way just you know, for simplicity. And here's why. Let's look at some strategies. Let's say you sell it all immediately. So you get the 15% or more discount and you sell it all. That discount is taxed at your ordinary tax rate. Now, I don't know what your ordinary tax rate is, but it's probably somewhere between 24 and 37%. So you remember now we're taking no stock risk. As soon as we get the stock, we sell it. So as soon as we buy it, we sell it. Maybe you have to wait a day or two for it gets to get in your account, but basically at the same time, you're going to pay 24 to 37% on the discount, not on the total amount, but just on the discount, that's going to be your tax. Now, the alternative is to hold the stock for maybe a year and a half to get that better tax treatment. Okay. If you do that better tax treatment is down here about 15 to 24%. So what's the advantage? You're going from 24 to 37 to 15 to 24. It's about a nine to 13% better tax rate. So in order to get that lower tax rate, which is only let's round off and call it 10 to 15% better, you have to hold the stock for a year and a half. So let me ask you a question. What's the probability that your stock actually falls during that year and a half period? What's the probability that it falls by the 10 to 15% that you hope to gain? Well, that's all it has to do to make the better strategy be to sell immediately. And of course, if it falls more than that, you're actually going to get less dollars in your pocket. Yes, you'll pay a lower tax rate. You can feel good about paying a lower tax rate. You're not going to feel good about having fewer dollars in your pocket. So this is one of the things that, that annoys me about uh, popular culture and tax rates. But yes, of course, we want to pay lower tax rates. But more importantly, we want more dollars in our pocket. So here's a situation where you could end up paying a lower tax rate, but also getting fewer dollars in your pocket. Let's not even go there. Let's try to maximize our dollars and pay that higher tax rate. Because my guess is that your answer to the question of what is the probability that the stock could fall by 10 to 15%, it's pretty high. It's possible. Any individual stock can move anywhere over a period, a period of time that short. So uh, let's not take the risk. Now, um, for those of you who have attended my other webinars in the past, you know that I am a big fan of selling company stock and reducing exposure to your company stock. And I want to just talk a little bit about why. And here, it, here we go. It's not from the return side. If you're uh, Elon Musk at Tesla and your stock goes through the roof, of course, I can't argue against that in hindsight. But if you're the other 5,000 or 50,000 or 500,000 entrepreneurs whose stock went down, um, that's a problem. So let's not look at the return side so much. Let's look at the risk side and let's think about your specific situation. So here's an example, and you can 
put in your own numbers for yourself. But here's an example I just made up. Let's take a family or somebody who has total assets distributed in this manner. They've got company stock. That's this nice blue color, one of my favorite colors. All right. So 20% in company stock. That doesn't seem like a whole lot, right? Maybe a little bit high, but it's not a whole lot, just by feel. Um, so they got 20% in company stock. They've got 10% in savings. They've got 30% in their 401k. And they've got 40% in their house. So those are their assets. I'm not counting cars and stuff like that. Just, you know, the big assets. Okay, but here's the problem. You're not going to spend your house to pay the bills. So we probably shouldn't consider the house. So let's take that out. Same person, we're just taking out the house. Now here's what we've got left. Well, now we've got 33% in company stock and I'm calling this financial assets. Take the house out, we're left with financial stuff. 33% in company stock, getting up there. 17% in savings and 50% in 401k. But here's the problem with this. You're not gonna spend your 401k, not until retirement. That's probably many years from now. So we can't really consider the 401k. We're happy we have it. That's great for security and retirement, but it does us no good right now if we need it. So let's take that out. Now we've got our liquid assets, our accessible assets. Well, look at what company stock did. It jumped all the way up to 67%. We went from 10% to 67% just by being a little bit more realistic in terms of the funds that are accessible to us and 33% in savings. Now, your numbers are gonna be different and your numbers may be fine, I don't know. I just know that most people I talk to are somewhere around this situation. So uh, let's be aware of that and know that this is the risk we're taking. You've got, if, if you've got this much in company stock to pay your current bills, and by the way, your income is coming from the same company, that might be a little risk. So consider the risk side of your investment strategy, especially with regard to your company stock. All right, the next slide, I'm gonna spend some time on this one because it's a concept that I really want you to get. So we're talking about a tax smart way to transition your company stock, not just the SPP, but your company stock, wherever it is, could be RSUs or options, whatever, into the rest of your financial life. How do we get it over without paying too much in tax? Well. And, and also at the same time, reducing that exposure quickly. Well, here's the method that I use with clients that I think is just terrific. It really makes a lot of sense. So here we go. Um, first off, calculate the tax cost of each lot of stock you own. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you've got past RSU awards, they have different vesting dates. Every vesting date has its own particular tax cost. If you vested some shares at hundred bucks, that's going to have a different tax cost than the shares that vested at 120 and the shares that invested 100, invested 150. Why? Because RSUs on the vest date, you're already taxed on that amount. So if you've already been taxed on 100 bucks, you're only going to pay gains on the, everything north of 100. And then the next lot, if you've already been taxed on 120, you're only going to get pay gains on the 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 gain pay tax on the amount over 120. So calculate the tax cost by stock lot, by vesting lot. Now convert that from dollars to a percentage. You want it as a percentage of the total market value. Why? Because you might have some stock that let's say just vested yesterday and has basically a 1% tax cost to get rid of. Like it's worth $10,000 and you're gonna owe, uh, you know, 500 bucks in capital gains tax because uh, the stock hasn't moved much or 50 bucks even. Um, so you want to calculate that dollar figure for each lot. Next, just sort, just sort by lowest to highest. If you had a tax lot that, um, you know, like I mentioned, $10,000, that costs you $50 to, to, to get that out of, to reduce that exposure in your company stock, get it over into your long-term portfolio that we've built in other webinars. Um, if you can do that, it costs you 50 bucks, why not? Diversification is your friend. And then you go to the next one. Well, then maybe the next one 
has a percentage cost of instead of 1% has a percentage cost of 5%. Well, maybe it's maybe you can do that and then 10% and so on. Now, the way I actually do this is if you have a lot and you want to do this over multiple tax years, in other words, you've got, so this example at the bottom, you've got $100,000 in stock, $30,000 in tax costs. And you're like, gee, I don't really want to pay $30,000 in tax costs uh, in one year. Here's what, how, what I suggest you do. Don't take the 100,000 and say, I'm gonna sell it over three years, so I'm gonna sell 33,000 each year. Don't do that uh, because you don't know what tax cost you're taking uh, with it. Instead, focus on the tax cost. 30,000 of tax cost, sell $10,000 of tax cost each year and do it in the order I mentioned. Do it so that you get more bang for your buck, more money out of your company stock per dollar of tax cost and you'll reduce your exposure really quickly. You can see in this made up example, uh, we, we actually reduce our exposure by half in the first year, even though we're only taking $10,000 in tax costs. The magic there comes from looking at the tax cost by lot. Be sure and do that. Um, then 30,000 the second year, 20,000 the third year, but in each year you get that $10,000 in tax cost. Now the stock's gonna move around, you're going to have to make changes, of course. Um, uh, you know, update your your plan, update your spreadsheet um, in terms of what the tax cost is uh, versus the gain. Um, but this is the way to I, I, the best way I know to make decisions on what stock what stock to sell when. Um, let's see. That's what I have about ESPP. I've covered all the items. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to get an email with a link to the replay of this video as well as these slides, download the slides, take a look at them, consider whether you're selling your company stock at the right pace for you, and then schedule a call with me. Uh, again, I'm offering a free coaching session because you attended this webinar uh, to uh, discuss this topic or any other topic really. I'm gonna put the link to schedule the session right now uh, in the chat if I can type the right thing. Let's see. Hmm. Uh oh. Let's see what comes up. There it is. All right, great. So there's the link. You can go ahead and schedule it. Schedule a couple of weeks out. Take a look at this, and um, uh, and I'd be happy to uh, spend that time with you. It's a three hundred dollar value. Um, and let's see, what else do we got? Ah, I have to say this is not financial advice because financial advice is specific to you and your situation. Uh, that is how the only way you want to take advice. Don't follow rules of thumb. Don't follow general philosophies, and certainly don't follow. Don't don't blindly follow some guy on a webinar, uh, even if it's me. Um, I do have other webinars out there, uh, as you can see there at the bottom. Uh, building a long term portfolio. That's the long term portfolio that we would move our proceeds to, um, to uh, support our future. Um, I have other resources. I've got a podcast, Deliberate Money Moves. Uh, take a look for that if you're interested. They're very, very short episodes, two to three minutes. And there's, they're uh, basically tips, financial tips. Uh, the blog, I've got a blog, I've got some educational videos. And if you ever have a question, just email me. I'm happy to chat by email. Um, about any uh, topic that you're facing, um, or again, use that link to schedule time for us. Next month, we're gonna talk about how to manage your RSU. So this was ESPP. Next month, we're gonna dive into RSU, RSUs. That's gonna be on April 7th, uh, always at 3.30 in the afternoon, California time. And always, 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 if you can't make it, just register and you'll get the link for uh, with the replay. So. There you go. That is uh, what I have to say, and I'm happy to um, take any questions. I'm just going to take a sip of water, and um, I see I got a I got at least one here. I'm going to take a look. Real quick. Okay. Um, this is a long one, but I'm I'm going to go ahead and read it. So uh, I'm enrolled in the SPP. I get emails from E-Trade that say your company has been informed. Has, has been informed that shares of your restricted stock have been released. Then I will get another email that says proceeds from your recent sell order have deposited and are listed below. I haven't sold anything myself, so what's happening here? Should I be stopping this from happening? No, here's what's happening. Um, ESPP and RSUs, 
E-Trade is legally obligated to send a portion of that money to the IRS. Remember, that's income for you. It's like ordinary, regular income. And E-Trade must send a portion to the IRS. Now, the portion they're required to send is not enough in most cases. So you end up actually owing more tax at the end of the year because they don't withhold, they don't sell and send enough. But they are required to, you know, because it's not compensation for you until it vests. As soon as it vests, it's just like a paycheck. And so they've got to send some money to the IRS uh, for withholding. So that's what's going on there. There's nothing you can do about it to stop it. Um, some companies allow you to actually increase it so that you send more so you get closer to the, the real amount if that's something you want to mess with. Uh, frankly, I wouldn't bother with it. I would just know that, you know, you're going to owe a little bit of extra tax at the end of the year. It's probably not worth the effort. Um, but that's what's going on. That's withholding for taxes. 